It has been more than seven months since the public first caught wind of the Department of Natural Resources delayed contamination reports from the Lake of the Ozarks. It's a discovery that set into motion a series of inspections as well as legal actions, the full scope of which has only recently begun to emerge. KOMU 8's Becca Haberger traced the chain reaction from the summer's E. coli scare at the lake, a chain that led right to the steps of the Missouri Attorney General's office. Captain Ron's Bar and Grill is getting ready to open for the 2010 season, but one letter threatened to change all that. I did not see it coming. And Captain Ron's wasn't the only business. I started hearing about some of the other ones. In fact, I made a comment to my staff, you know, I'll, I'll bet we're next. The news? We got turned over because we elected not to agree to those those type of demands. The demands came from Missouri's Department of Natural Resources. It found more than a few businesses cutting corners when it came to filtering wastewater. The DNR tried stepping in to correct this system at Buccaneer Bay, which services Captain Ron's and several vacation homes. You know, I had to sign an agreement stating that I was going to uh, completely replace my system and uh, close my doors until I do that and um, pay a fine. And I just, you know, that just wasn't an option for me. Businesses at the lake might have continued operating under lax conditions, but the negative attention the DNR received this past summer prompted immediate and public action. It was a sweep that we did uh, at the end of recreation season. A zero tolerance policy concerning polluting the lake with contaminants. In October, Governor Nixon ordered a sweeping inspection at the lake of the 419 wastewater treatment facilities that have permits from the DNR. Now what we found in October was 37 percent of the 419 wastewater treatment facilities that we inspected were out of compliance. That's 155 wastewater treatment facilities failing state standards. 34 of the uh, non-compliant permittees had no disinfection system in place or a non-functioning disinfection system, so really putting untreated effluent uh, into the waters of the state. And in the last five months, the state DNR has referred 19 violations of the Missouri Clean Water Law, most of those at the lake, to the Attorney General's office. The DNR says that's a last resort. Enforcement again tries to work with them and then it gets referred over to the Attorney General's office if they can't get uh, if they can't come to an agreement. But Dugan says that gives off the wrong impression. The perception is that that all these sewer systems that are being turned over uh, to the Attorney General's office are all dumping sludge into the Lake of the Ozarks and it's just not the case. Violations ranged from poor discharge monitoring reports to sludge found oozing out of the facilities. Had it not been for the attention the lake received after the E. coli cover-up, would these violations have ever been found or fixed? Consider that in the first eight months of 2009, the DNR hadn't referred a single Clean Water Act violation to the Attorney General's office. The inspection schedule might explain that fact. We do inspect all year long, but it really is dependent uh, upon when a permit comes up rather than any other sort of calendar in terms of regular inspections. In light of October's findings, time will tell whether a sweeping wave of inspections becomes standard practice. Becca Hobbiger, KUMU 8 News, Sunrise Beach. And next week, we'll look at septic systems in Missouri and how up until 1996, many went virtually unregulated.